Welcome to Electron Line. Here we're going to do a problem where we're firing a bullet towards a block. The block is sitting on a frictionless horizontal plane. The block is attached to a spring and as the block, as the bullet hits the block, it doesn't go through the block, it gets embedded in the block and pushes the block into the spring. The spring compresses a total of 10 centimeters before the block gets pushed back. So the questions are, first of all, what is the maximum potential energy in the spring when it's fully compressed? What is the velocity of the block right after the bullet hits the block? And what is the initial velocity of the bullet to make the block compress the spring 10 centimeters? So notice we have some interesting units on the board. We have the mass of the bullet in grams, the mass of the block in grams, the compression in centimeters, and the spring constant in terms of dynes per centimeter, 50,000 dynes per 0.5 centimeters, which would be 100,000 dynes per centimeter. Notice that a dyne is 1 times 10 to the minus 5th newtons, order newton is 100,000 dynes, and also we have the units of erg on the board. 1 erg is 1 times 10 to the minus 7 joules, an erg is a dyne times centimeter. So notice that these are still metric units, but they're not used very much anymore. Usually we convert everything into newtons and joules. But let's work the problem out using these, these old units to see how they work. The reason why they used to have those units is because back in the old days, we didn't have calculators, and so therefore it was more difficult to convert things with the scientific notation, so they used units like these. Let's go ahead and see how they work. First of all, the maximum potential energy of the spring. Okay, when the spring is fully compressed, we can say that the potential energy is equal to one half kx squared. Now notice 50,000 dimes per 0.5 centimeters is 100,000 dimes per centimeter. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is equal to one half times 100,000 dimes. Oop, I'm missing an end there per one centimeter, and we're going to multiply it times the distance squared, which is 10 centimeters quantity squared. Notice, I'll have, the units will be dynes times centimeters, and the dyne centimeters, of course, can be converted to ergs or joules. So let's go ahead and calculate that. So we have uh, 50,000, because we have to divide by two, uh, times 100, and that gives us, well, let's go to scientific notation, 5 times 10 to the 6th. So this is equal to 5 times 10 to the 6th. Now the units would be dyne times centimeters, which means that this is uh, 5 times 10 to the 6th ergs. And of course, converting that to joules, that means that this is equal to 0 0.5 joule because you need 10 to the 7th ergs for one joule, so that's equal to 0 0.5 joules. All right, next we want to find out the velocity of the block after the impact. Hmm, to do that, I think we're going to need the conservation momentum. We can say that P initial equals P final. And so initially the bullet is moving, so we have the mass of the bullet times velocity of the bullet initially, plus the mass of the block times the velocity initial of the block, which will be zero because the block was just sitting there. And that's going to be equal to the sum m plus big M times the velocity final. And that would be the final velocity of the block. So that means that the solving for V final, V final would be equal to m V initial plus big M V initial divided by the sum of the two masses. Plugging in the numbers, that is equal to the block that would be 10 grams, multiply times the velocity, well, that's what we're looking for, V initial, plus M V initial, that would be zero, all divided by M plus M, that would be 10 plus 990, that's in grams, that would be V final, and so notice that V final is gonna be equal to, uh, let's see here, mm, uh, that would be 10, divided by 1,000 V initial, which is equal to 0 0.01 V initial. So obviously, I cannot calculate V final in this way because I don't know what my initial velocity is. Once I know my initial velocity of the bullet, I could find out, once I know my initial velocity of the bullet, I can find the final velocity of the block. 
But there's another way in which we can calculate that because we did calculate the maximum potential energy of the spring when the spring was compressed. So what we could do also here, we can say that right after the bullet strikes the block, the bullet and the block together will have some kinetic energy. So we can say kinetic energy initial must equal potential energy final when the spring is compressed. So in this case, that would be one half the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block times V initial squared. And notice that this V initial squared of the block and the bullet together is the final velocity of the block after the collision. So what we can say is the final velocity of the, of the block after the bullet strikes the block equals the initial velocity of the block when we start the second part of the problem, which is the energy conservation part of the problem, where the block is now some motion, some initial velocity, and it compresses the spring. So that is going to be equal to one half kx squared. Of course, we already calculated that one half kx squared, so we can say that this is going to be equal to 0 0.5 joules. And notice that this is going to be one half times the sum of the two, which is a thousand grams, which is one kilogram, times V initial squared. So that means that V initial squared is equal to 2 times 0.5, which is 1. So therefore, V initial equals, when we take the square root, 1, and that would be meters per second. Now notice that this is in meters per second because we converted the, uh, the potential energy of the spring to joules. And finally, we can then turn that back into this equation. So now we can find out what the V initial of the bullet is. We can say that V initial of the bullet is equal to V final of the block divided by 0.01, which means V initial of the bullet is equal to 100, divided by 0 0.01, the same as multiplying by 100, V final. And so this is 100 times 1 meter per second, which is what we found over here. And so therefore, V initial of the bullet is equal to 100 meters per second. And that is how we solve that.